the statement of cash flows. The basic elements which will be included in the various sections of the statement of cash flows, the operating, the investing, or the financing section. The statement of cash flows is one of the four basic financial statements. In addition to the income statement, the statement of owner's equity or statement of retained earnings and the balance sheet, a company will prepare a statement of cash flows. The statement of cash flows has four sections, operating, investing, financing, and disclosures of non-cash investing and financing transactions. It provides a detail of how cash was obtained and spent by the company in operating its business, the operating section, and investing in its infrastructure, investing, and financing its operations, financing. The statement informs the reader if cash has been obtained through operating the company, through selling assets, or by borrowing money or issuing stock. Healthy companies primarily generate cash flow from operating activities, not from selling off their assets or issuing stock or incurring debt. Although selling off the assets, issuing stock, or incurring debt are a great way to expand, the company wants to be able to meet its day-to-day -day operations through generating cash from its operating activities. The operating section. How much cash was generated and spent through conducting the business of the company? It starts with net income. Current assets and current liabilities of the business are also considered in preparing the cash used and obtained through operating the business. It includes cash from sales, customers from cash sales, so collections from customers on cash sales, collection from customers on credit sales, from borrowers on interest, Dividends received from investments in other companies, so if the company has idle cash and invests in another company and receives a dividend, then it would show up in their operating section. Or if perhaps the company had a lawsuit settlement, it would also be in their operating section. So one of the things to focus in on is it would include cash if anybody borrowed from the company, the interest would show up in the operating section not in the financing section, but in the operating section. It would include cash spent on salaries and wages, vendors for goods and services, taxes and governmental fines, and interest paid to lenders. So the interest paid to lenders winds up in the operating section, not the financing section. The investing section. This would include long-term assets. So this is what you would primarily be looking at when you're looking at the investing section. So it doesn't include net income nor current liabilities or current assets. So it just has a focus on long-term assets. So this would be the purchase and sale of long-term assets, investments in the securities of another corporation, lending and collecting money for notes receivable for non-sales transactions. So lending and collection of money if they were to lend money to another company. So this would be notes receivable for non-sales related transactions. If the note receivable is to a customer, then it's included in the operating section because it would be part of their operations. But if the note receivable is not related to sales, then the collection of the principal is included in the investing section, but the collection of the interest would be included in the operating section. It's a gap rule. doesn't always seem to make sense, but nonetheless, it's a rule. The easiest way to remember, only the principal on notes for non-sales transactions are included in the investing section. Everything else would be in the operating section. Investing section. So cash from selling long-term assets, from selling the investments that you have in another company. So if you sell, have an investment in the securities of another company, you sell it and you get cash from it, it would be included in the investment section and the collection of principal on non-sales notes receivable. And then it would include cash paid to purchase long-term assets. If you purchase investments in the securities of another company, the companies do this with our idle, idle cash, or if you make a loan to another company for a non-sales transaction. Now let's look at the financing section. This would include looking at all long-term liabilities and the stockholders' equity. So it just includes looking at long-term liabilities and stockholders' equity. It includes transaction related to the company's owners and creditors.
So this would be investments from owners, cash or dividends paid to owners, transactions related to loans when you borrow from a, from a bank, or transaction related to bonds. So when you would sell bonds, the transactions related to selling a bond would be found in the financing section. It's how a company is financing its business, uh, separate from its operating activities. So it would include cash from issuing stock shares, that's the, own, the company's own stock shares, issuing short-term or long-term debt, contributions from owners, and issuing bonds. Cash paid to owners for dividends, to owners as withdrawals, to purchase treasury shares, and to repay principals on loans, but however, the interest the cash interest is always included in the operating section. So the interest is in the operating section, principal in the financing section. Non-cash investing and financing. When important investing and financing activities do not affect cash receipts or payments, they are still disclosed at the bottom of the statement of cash flows in a note to the statement because of their importance in the full disclosure principle. So what would an example of that look like? It would be like the purchase of a long-term asset using a long-term note payable. This transaction involves both investing and financing activities, but doesn't affect any cash inflow or outflow and is not reported in any of the three sections of the statement of cash flows because they're primarily concerned with tri cash transactions. It would also be the purchase of long-term assets by issuing shares of stock, again a non-cash transaction, retirement of bonds by issuing shares of stock, are converting preferred stock to common stock. This is what a statement of cash flows would look like. It would be cash flows from operating activities, a list of all the individual inflows and outflows, the net cash provided or used by operating activities, then we would have the investing section, and the net cash provided or used by investing activities, financing section, net cash provided or used by financing activities, all three of these individual sections would be added together and that should give you your total net increase or decrease in cash. To that, the, the change in cash or the increase or decrease in cash, you would add it to cash at the cash balance at the prior period end, which should give you the new cash balance at the current period end. And then there would be a separate schedule or no disclosure of any non-cash investing or financing transactions.